Good evening to you, Jenny and Logan. We know that tonight what they are going to be considering is how to handle a situation that some describe as out of control. This park has been here for quite some time, and really over the last several years, we have seen an increase in reported crimes. And of course, those who are living here say this is something that needs a more permanent solution instead of just temporarily closing it. They also will be voting on whether to invest $350,000 into upping security here at this park. Again, something that advocates say could be used in in a much better way as far as funding goes. I can tell you though, parents at children of children who attend Harborside Elementary, they have expressed concern, especially with the school year starting, about the lack of security and only being separated by a chain linked fence. We know this morning they added some of the green turf barrier between it to add more privacy as far as the site goes. But again, this is very close to this park and some say that it is going to be an issue uh, in the future. The park has been here for 16 years. In addition to the school, it's bordered by a county family resource center, a Walmart, and a trolley station. But there has been, again, increasing problems over the last several years specifically. According to city officials from the start of 2019 until today, the park has seen significantly higher numbers of crime reports, arrests, citations, and if that's in compared to other parks nearby and those of similar size. So code enforcement has filed dozens of complaints from not just residents and business and property owners, but also those saying that there's been an increase of trash and debris. So again, tonight at 5 o'clock, they're going to be considering that temporary closure, the investment of more money, but they're also going to propose a ban. This is something that we see in some of the larger cities like Los Angeles that would uh, ban homeless encampments within 500 feet of those schools. This is something right now that so many are saying needs to be done to ensure that there is a safe plan in place before any major decision is made. So we're going to be speaking with council members in the upcoming hour, and I spoke to some who live here. I wanted to get a feel for what uh, their thoughts were on tonight's vote. They said that even if they have been approached by uh, county officials that want to help them get permanent housing, that they're being told they have to get rid of their pets, that they have to abide by very strict rules for them to even be eligible for that housing and so many say that their pets are part of their family and that they want to be able to keep those pets. Some have been living here up to two years. So again, this just shows that it's not a new problem, that this problem has been growing, but one that advocates and city council members, it seems like, have a very different way of wanting to handle it. So again, we'll be speaking with council member John McCann uh, soon here about his thoughts. He is the one that's going to be proposing the changes that he feels need to be made to temporarily close this park, to regroup and to get a better handle on the situation. But we're also going to be speaking to advocates who for three years now have spent time making sure that the people who live here have food and water and access to those services should they want them. But they said simply the wait times right now from county health officials who are trying to step in and help these people find uh, permanent solutions, that there's just too long of a wait list. And this is something that uh, they need to address before they just temporarily close this park and push these people out. So we'll have more coming up in our later newscast. Again, that meeting is happening tonight at 5 o'clock here in Chula Vista, Harborside Park behind me. That they will be the center of debate. We'll let you know what happens. But for now, we are live tonight in Chula Vista, Hunter Sowards, KUSI News.